Hello, I'm Renaud from Mount Mountains and welcome to this Corgi Engine tutorial about achievements. Uh, achievements in the Corgi Engine have been introduced in version 3.1. Um, it's a really simple yet powerful achievement system. Uh, it will allow you to define, trigger and save achievements. It's quite modular, it's easy to extend, uh, which means that if you want to uh, build a game for Steam or for Android or for iOS, uh, all these platforms, they do have a social API. Um, the system will be compatible with that. Uh, it doesn't include the code you'll need to actually plug yourself in. That's something you need to add yourself uh, because I didn't want to add any dependency to these libraries. But uh, uh, most of them share the, a, a similar logic for the achievement. They all have a name, an icon, stuff like that, description. Um, so the system has been has been built with that in mind, so you shouldn't have too much trouble. Uh, the first thing I guess I get asked the most, um, at least during the, the beta period, about achievements was how do you reset them? Because of course, once you've unlocked an achievement, you cannot unlock it again, so you need some way to reset them. Um, that can be easily done using the more maintenance menu at the top and clicking on reset all achievements. You will see that uh, it outputs some debug. Um, text uh, in the console and um, this shows here that it removed uh, successfully uh, the achievements binary file uh, which is located uh, on your device in an mm data folder mm achievements and that's the name of the file so you could also reset achievements by simply removing that file of course a button in is much simpler all right, so now that we've seen how to reset achievements, maybe you'd like to see what they do, so let's press play. Uh, so here we have our little big character. Uh, something new in 3.1 I wanted to show you is that now uh, you can have angled characters, uh, which will change orientation based on the slope angle they're working on. Uh, so let's, let's jump around. One, two, three times, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And when I jump for the 10th time, I get an achievement for that because, I mean, it deserves it. So um, how how does it work? Let's stop the game for now. And if we go to Common, Resources, uh, Achievements, and Achievement List, you'll see that uh, that's where everything is defined. So um, I have a list of achievements. Uh, right now I have five achievements in that list and one is called Jump Around. That's the one we just unlocked. Um, so if we have a look at it, uh, you'll see that um, it has an ID. It has to be a unique string ID. It has a type. This one is a progress achievement as opposed to a simple achievement. St simple achievements are uh, something that don't require doing things X times. Uh, they're just, uh, you know, um, you've completed the game, uh, you've uh, killed an enemy for the first time, stuff like that. Um, in this case it's a progress achievement, as we need to jump 10 times. Um, the achievement can be hidden uh, and you can decide that it's unlocked. Um, I don't see many use cases where you'd want an achievement to be already unlocked, but uh, that's something you can do if you want. And it has a title and a description. These will be displayed in the small box that uh, you get when you unlock the achievement. Um, there's a locked icon, unlocked icon. The unlocked icon is also on that small box and you can specify an unlocked sound uh, that would play when you unlock a specific achievement. And as this is a progress based achievement, we need to feel uh, the progress target and the progress current. The the current one, usually you want to leave it at zero um, for obvious reasons, but you can change the target. Uh, in this case we want to get the achievement when we reach 10 jumps, so it's 10. Um, and that's basically it for the achievement list. Uh, at the bottom of it you'll see there's a reset achievements button. It does exactly the same thing as the other one. Um, so if I click it, I just reset my achievements. We've seen how achievements are defined in that list. Uh, now it's time to see how to actually unlock them from the code. So um, if we go to uh, our game manager's object uh, in the hierarchy view, you'll see that it now has an achievement rules component. If I open that, um, and uh, I'll just make sure, yeah, it's recording 
this window too. Um, this achievement rules uh, class component is an extension of the MM achievement rules. It's the base class that you need to extend if you want to have all achievements unlocked from the same place. Because there are basically two ways that you can unlock achievements. Um, you can do that from any class you want. For example, um, at the end of a level you have a class that uh, displays fireworks or whatever. You could decide that your uh, you've completed the game achievement is unlocked from that class. I myself prefer to have all my achievements uh, logic put inside the same class. So that way when I want to work on achievements I know where to go. I don't have bits and pieces everywhere. To do that um, I extend the MM achievement rules class and I add a lot of event listeners. Um, events have been introduced in version 3.1, I think, of the Corgi engine. Um, they are a specific uh, MM event manager system uh, that I created and there's documentation for that, so uh, look it up if you don't know how it works. But basically, the idea is that any class can broadcast an achievement, say, I'm doing this, and other class can decide to listen to that type of achievement. Uh, of events, sorry, and um, do things when they get these events. So for example, um, I have pickable item events. Uh, every time an, an item gets picked, whether it's a coin, a steam pack or whatever, it broadcasts an event that says, hey, I'm being picked and I'm a coin and I do things uh, and stuff. And any class like this achievement rules class can listen to this event and in this case, um, if the pickable item um, in the event is not null uh, and if it's a coin then I had progressed to the money 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 uh, achievement and uh, if we go back to um, uh, character events uh, so that's all the changes that happen to all characters in the game um, based on the, the character state machine uh, for example if I um, jump it will trigger an event called uh, character event types jump so that's the one I be, I'll be listening to here uh, to add progress to the jump around achievement that we've just unlocked so there are basically only two lines of code that you need uh, to know uh, one is add progress uh, for achievements that have indeed progress and the other one is unlock achievement and that's only used for um, simple achievements uh, achievements like you've completed the game um, so yeah if you want to do it in a single file like I did uh, you can do it like that and basically copy that one and modify it to suit your needs remove achievements add achievements uh, if however you want to do it uh, from anywhere there's one thing you'll need to do uh, which is um, which is something that's done in the MM Achievement Rules class at the start and these are these two lines. These two lines tell the MM Achievement Manager which is a static class that lives somewhere that you don't see um, and does the hard work for you. Uh, you'll need to tell it to load the achievement list. The achievement list is the scriptable object that we've modified earlier um, and you'll need to tell it to load the current state of achievements. Load and save is handled automatically as long as you have these two lines. And there's one last thing we need to see um, and that's how to display the achievements. Um, as you could see earlier when I reached my 10th jump I got a little box saying hey uh, you've got a new achievement. Um, all this is done using uh, a GUI element that lies inside the UI camera prefab. So um, if you just want to use achievement and are happy with the look of it right now, you can just have a UI camera prefab in your scene and it will work. If however you want to change the way they work, that's here that the magic happens. Uh, we have this achievements vertical layered group. Um, game object in our scene and it has a vertical layered group and an MM achievement display component. Um, this component here is used to handle the positioning of 
uh, the achievements. I, I'm just gonna zoom on that. So that's our UI camera prefab. Um, what happens is that um, the achievement displayer will uh, instantiate achievement display game objects. They are located, well, th there's only one. It's located into uh, the MM Tools achievements prefabs folder. It's called achievement display. It's just some sort of uh, game object that contains uh, text and images. And if I add one and more, you'll see that they they stack. So if you unlock two or three or four achievements at the same time, they will stack uh, up to a maximum of eight, say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe eight. You can of course modify that to handle your needs. Uh, I don't know many games that have like eight simultaneous achievements, but you can do it if you want. Um, so if you want to di to modify the look of these things, um, you need to m create a new prefab that will uh, have this MM achievement display item script, um, which is a script that just binds um, parts of the prefab to uh, some logic like uh, this is the icon that you need to change, this is the title that you need to change and so on. Really simple stuff. Um, that covers pretty much everything you need to know about achievements in the Corgi engine. I hope you like this tutorial and that you will now put lots of achievements into your game. Um, have a good day, bye.